this is a very loaded question for me because I've been doing it for a long, long time. In fact, it is the basis of my entire philosophy about designing a home is first the environment and the location. I think that we have a great responsibility as architects to consider especially the environment. And I can't think of a house that I haven't done that hasn't been in total compatibility with the environment. First, I have to sit on the lot, and then I have to consider all of the elements, one after the other, whether the sun is rising over there or over there, or the wind, or the mosquitoes, if there are any, and all of those things that are environmentally correct for that particular site. What we really need to do at this present time is consider what we are doing to the environment and how it is changing the atmosphere and the weather of this world, this planet that we're living on. Because there's nothing more than a spaceship traveling in a giant orbit around the sun. And we are passengers and we have to consider at all times, the environment within this spaceship that we're on. It's as simple as that. We cannot overpopulate it because too many passengers on a plane, it overcomes the place that we are in this universe. It becomes overburdened, is the word. So, to do that, we should seriously consider the population the number of people on the planet using up the materials that go to make a living possible. Food and building materials, energy making materials. I believe that that should be our first consideration in regards to what we are doing with our architectural work. We have to design to the environment or we over design and we eliminate ourselves as a species. Nature will do it. We'll have nothing to do with it. We'll just overindulge and we will cancel out. We'll become another strata along with the bones of the dinosaurs and the vegetation before them and all of the things that lived before us and disappeared on this planet. We have to be careful. We have the intelligence to do so. We should use our intelligence. We are our future, and if we don't learn by our mistakes, then we're history. And some other life form will take over, and it may be totally different intellectually speaking. It may be more oriented to vegetation and or the natural elements 
for energy and concentrate on the sun, as we did in the very, very beginning and lost our way with petroleum. Petroleum could be the end of us. It could pass out, and we pass out with it. So we have to find another source of energy, which of course is all around us. And electricity is the best choice that I have so far. And my partner are designing a new form of propulsion through electricity for automobiles, trucks, buses, everything. And we, if we do that, we can prolong our existence on Earth, but without changing our means of energy, anything except something natural is occurring. And that's not difficult to do. We have the technology to do it. As far as the electric car is concerned, how beautiful it would be to go down the road without any sound and getting away from the fossil fuels. Our time is very limited. The tipping point could be within the next century. Goodbye, humanity. Hello, some other animal, great animal form, evolving at this moment. Innovation and invention is probably the best way to describe what we have in our future as a human race. This we can do. This is our edge on the environment. And that is we take what is needed, which is new energy and new ways of propelling ourselves around the planet and incorporating it into new design for whatever it is we are conveying ourselves in and or heating our houses and or producing food, whatever. We need to take this into definite account. I innovated a new design that takes into consideration what's happening on the earth today. Earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunamis, floods, all of it. The designs should be incorporated into the structures that we design today and relate to them, not ignore them as we are often doing. There are those out there that are, are trying their best to do what I'm talking about, but I don't see it.
It is really, really important that we concentrate on structurally adaptable to all of the forces of nature. This should be the bottom line of our design. Other things can come into it. I mean, design is not just design, but it should be related to the elements and the forces of nature that are within the planet. The forces are multiplying by the square because of our ignorance about them. We overlook them and, and we repair, but we don't design for the future of what is happening in the world and the planet today because of our ignorance, because of us. We are changing the environment. And to say that we're not is ridiculous. Every time you open the paper, something else has happened environmentally in the world. And yet we have all these great forces around us. We have lightning, we have heat, we have radiation from the sun. We have water forces, we have waves, we have volcanic action. With our technology and our intelligence, we should be using all of it. We should not be stuck in the rut of petroleum and coal and the things we burn that put particulates into the air. It isn't the way to go. It is ridiculous to even tolerate the thought of that kind of solution to our needs. Back in the 70s, I started drawing and imagining a house that would survive fire, flood, earthquake. What I came up with was a structure that would withstand all of these things and not have to destroy the site to build it. It sits alone, it has a tripod foundation, it's on a tripod, it can be set up in any position on any kind of a terrain and be stable. The materials used determine whether or not it's fireproof. The structural materials that are used determine how it survives an earthquake. The wind forces and the flood forces and the hillside slide forces are all adjusted within the structure of the mushrooms. Each one helps the other. I hope to have that house up and within uh, two years, providing I can get it through the building department. That's the biggest hurdle of all, is whether or not they will permit something as unique and answering all of the problems that they have in building today. gallery open was a big shock to me. I've never had anything like that happen before. I just sort of puttered along and did the best I could with what I had. I want to get away from the generation of power through anything except something natural that's occurring. And that's not difficult to do. We have the technology to do it. As far as the electric car is concerned, how beautiful it would be to go down the road without any sound. <laughs>